Hello there, it's Christy. I want to do a quick video because I've been bombarded with comments in the comment section of my video where we critiqued um, No Plum's assertions about rape culture. And I, in that video, in the annotations, as well as in the comments, and several times to Noel himself, I've pointed out the various failings of his presentation. And my understanding is he's, he's made uh, a response video, um, well, I guess there's probably two response videos, but the most recent one was released, I guess, I don't know, in the last 48 hours or something, because a lot of people have been coming over and making the same arguments over and over in the comments of my video on it. And so I um, have not watched it yet. It's apparently 55 minutes long, <laughs> and uh, that's quite a time commitment. So what I thought I'd do is do um, a quick like summary of what my objections were and how they are being handled in the comments section of my video. Now the first thing is that I some people seem to be upset that I held Noel to academic standards. And I'm not entirely sure why he was surprised by this. Uh, I've blocked out his side of the conversation, but as you can see from my side of the conversation, I alerted him, uh, we were talking about this in the comment section, and then we started talking on Twitter, and I informed him on the 17th of February, I will be doing an intense review of it, it being his video, as I would do for a peer review. And then he responded back in the affirmative. He never told me not to do it. He never told me not to hold him up to peer review standards or to intensely review his comments. He was always encouraging and when I ended up having to delay, um, I let him know just so that uh, he wouldn't be expecting it and he was fine. So, I mean, it's not as if this was a surprise to Noel or somehow I, um, you know, uh, undercut him in some way. He knew exactly what I said I would do, which is to watch his video through twice and do an intense review of it and critique it. And that's what the aim was, and that's what we did. Now, the reason why I ended up being thoroughly unimpressed with the video is because it didn't do anything that you have to do to credibly convince someone of something in reality. It's not about opinions. If he wants to assert that rape culture is a thing over here, but it's not a thing over there, then he has to establish both the existence and the non-existence, and he has to do it according to the concept as defined. So the reason why it was unimpressive was that his rape culture videos um, were seriously flawed. First of all, he didn't read any of the essential texts or any of the essential articles. And that's why I haven't done a video on rape culture, because I haven't done the research to speak intelligently to it. And so I just keep my mouth shut, you know, but I can obviously see when we see when someone else is talking shit, because it's easy to see that he doesn't do and he just demonstrates no awareness at any point in the video that he's aware of the body of work that exists on the concept of rape, rape culture. The research in his the research in his video was poorly organized. It wanders all over the place. It doesn't proceed in a coherent fashion, building an argument with evidence and another argument and more evidence leading you to a conclusion. It goes all over the place. He talks about rape in the Middle Ages and talks about things in anthropology that you can't visually inspect. And he talks about pit bulls at some point. He talks about Anidia Sarkeesian. None of these things have anything to do with the topic. So it was poorly organized. The inadequate discussion, he, he replaced rape statistics or crime statistics with um, for the concept of rape culture, which is about processes, about sexuality and gender. So he didn't talk about issues of sexuality and how those are handled in a culture. He didn't talk about issues of gender and you know, maybe do a comparative work with the way that women are viewed in the Middle East or other parts of the world and in the West and how these are different. He doesn't discuss any of that. And ultimately, he offers a fundamentally inadequate response to the topic. He doesn't demonstrate that rape culture, that they that we don't live in a rape culture, or answering the question, do we live in a rape culture? No. He didn't provide any evidence to substan substantiate that no. And of course, large parts of the video are irrelevant, and we've already kind of discussed that. But I mean, it's a really long video for the actual substance of it when you get down to it, which is basically his definition for rape culture that he takes and uses appropriately, the one he makes up for himself, throwing in random crime statistics, and then concluding there isn't a rape culture. That's really the only like part that directly deals with the idea of at least of sexual assault, if not rape culture. So I listed, I think, six objections 
uh, to in the annotation of the video as well as to Noel himself and in the comment section and you know I presented these around and his fans are coming to the comment section providing rebuttals so I thought we would have a look at the kinds of comments that are coming up so in terms of a response to my outlined objection that Noel cites a definition which is perfectly acceptable and could have used would have been appropriate to use in the course of the video but instead he throws it away and he makes up his own based on something being abnormally high without defining what high is or abnormally or in the past or what the past was he's like you know in that creationist make up things about kinds he basically made up his own version of the concept rather than dealing with the scholarly definition as exists in the extant literature so what kind of response do I get to this? Christy Winters has only proven that the social sciences are in no way scientific. Okay, so here's an example. Credible defense of Knowles position zero, personal insult one. Let's see how this goes along. Secondly, Knowles misoperationalized the concept, as I mentioned before, to be about rape statistics, not culture or social processes around sexuality and gender. And that's important because it's a he's basically done a bait and switch. He said, I'm going to give you this, this appropriate definition and then talk for a really long time. And then I'm going to make up my own definition that has to do with rape statistics, not about culture. And if you look at the definition for rape culture, it talks about these socialization processes of normalizing things by getting victims to not re um, report it. We talked about military uh, rape, the U.S. situation with military rape and how people up the food chain, up the line of chain of command, were never prosecuted before for sexual um, offenses, whether it's adultery or anything like that. And we're starting to see more of those guys now being um, investigated when charges come up, as opposed to it being pushed under the rug. These are the kinds of cultural and process issues that rape culture is really discussing. It's not about crime rates. So how does, how does one of you know, Noel's fans defend Noel in this case to his own definition or his own use of rape statistics. This video is in no way academic, thorough, or knowledgeable. To pretend so is ingenuous in the extreme. The total lack of self-awareness is the only enjoyable aspect of this video is as people do not even begin to live up to their own intellectual pretensions. It seems more like lazy, mediocre students giving their teachers a grade than a... And, and I didn't cut that off, that's just where it ended. So again, another situation where it's not actually engaging with the critique, it's just insulting me. Another objection I had to Noel's video was that he just picked the U.S. seemingly at random. There were no theoretical grounds for choosing the United States. Um, there's no theoretical grounds for only choosing one country. If you're looking at whether or not we live in a rape culture, and you want to say that rape culture exists in place X but not in place Y, and your evidence is country Y, well you haven't done X, or Z, or any other letter of the alphabet. So the idea that you can just cite some random statistics from one country to demonstrate that you don't, by your judgment, things aren't high and therefore you don't live in a rape culture is just silly. I mean, you wouldn't let a creationist get away with that. So why, when you're coming to making empirical claims about what exists in the social world in the United States, or in Britain, or in France, or in Germany, or in Ireland, or in Australia, or in South Africa, or in Canada, any of these places, why weren't those countries used? You have to, it's not just enough to throw numbers around. You have to make an argument. And it has to be one that's based in evidence. And the evidence has to be there for a reason that makes sense. Just throwing in evidence is not convincing. So how was this critique dealt with? What a great video. Then again, what should I expect from someone with your oh-so-high degree of intelligence, Christy? Stupid, dishonest cretin. You know, there's a trend that I'm starting to notice with Noel's fans. And it's that they don't actually have any information about my critique. I'm starting to wonder if that's because Noel doesn't talk about my actual critique that I told him back in February that I was going to be doing. Four, the fourth time period was not justified on theoretical, gr theoretical grounds. This fourth point is similar to the one about the case study. If you're going to pick a time period, there needs to be theoretical reasons why. For instance, 
picking it, you know, to cover uh, the start of, uh, since the start of second wave feminism, or a few years before the start of second wave feminism, so you can look at change over time. That's a good theoretical justification for a time period if you're comparing five countries, let's say, or three countries even, um, or, you know, you know like pulled at random or something from, uh, from a data set. If you want to compare, you say, a developed country to a developing country, these kinds of things. But it just seemed like the time period, I actually I don't think he gave any reason. He just threw out the dates. And this is not sufficient. This is inadequate. This is not, is not convincing. And Noel seems to think I'm being mean to him, but the fact is he made a shit argument. The solution is not to get mad to, at me. The solution is to up your game and take these points on and make a better argument. Make a 55 minute video making a better argument. That would be a good contribution. You know, it's really pathetic to see someone who lauds herself as a social scientist act in such a petulant manner. No wonder sociology is considered such a joke in academic institutions these days when someone can't have an open, honest debate when the judgment is made after the assumption. There's more, but they don't actually make any more arguments. They just go on to make insults. Again, not a defense of any of the points that I raised about why Noel's assertions were not credible and not believable. Fifth. Noel ignored any comparative element in the data. Again, he only used one case study. And that is, I suspect, because there are actually far fewer rapes reported in the Middle East because their rape culture is very different insofar as women um, can't even get to uh, access police services. Uh, whereas in the United States, some women can and men can too. Obviously, rape in the Middle East is, is for men would be different. So um, there's, there's a lot of different ways that you can compare cultures around rape and reporting rape and prosecuting rape, but Noel didn't do that. He just looked at some U.S. data and didn't do any comparative work. Well, that's, I suspect, because since he said that it had to be rates of rape that were abnormally high or were higher than they were in the past or something like that, his, um, the, the problem is that it just looks like there are fewer rapes if you go by crime statistics. And that's why I suspect he didn't do any comparative analysis, because it would make him question the whole process of using crime statistics in the first place, since you wouldn't be able to do a good comparison because of the cultural differences. So uh, that's another pretty big problem, using one country and one data point, neither of which are theoretically justified. It's not convincing. There's a really long response. Unfortunately, you're a dumb cunt and fucking quoted Wikipedia and cited other works as your source to make yourself sound more believable. This fact alone shows you're a dis disingenuous fucktard and shouldn't be taken seriously. Wow, Noel, your fans make amazingly coherent responses to um, my objections. I wonder where they get that information. So finally, the video was just way too long. It was poorly organized. It didn't flow in a coherent way. You didn't really know where things were going because Noel seemed to be doing everything off the top of his head, just stream of consciousness. And it included several irrelevant tangents on things like pit bulls and then you know, Sarkeesian that went on and on and on and just didn't have anything to do with the topic. So those are the reasons that I critique Noel harshly because he didn't do the work. And the idea that I'm somehow being mean to him is really ridiculous because he knew this was coming. If he didn't want my analysis in an intense way on a sort of peer review level, then he should have said no. And I wouldn't have done a critique. But what happened was I did do a critique and he didn't like it. And now he seems to be making lots of videos instead of addressing my critiques, just complaining about me. And that is not very... Well, it doesn't speak well to his ability to take on criticism, criticism in order to make better content. That's going to wrap this up. I just really wanted to go on the record to let people know that Noel knew I was going to be doing an intense critique of his video well in advance, and that this sort of surprise that I criticized him is a little bit disingenuous, and also the fact that instead of actually meaningfully engaging with the critique, he is attacking me instead. It, you know, when you get a peer review, when you get a revise and resubmit as an academic, when you send out a piece of work and your peers send it back to you and say, look, you need to do this and this and this and this and this to change it, to make it publishable. I don't whine. I don't cry. I don't make excuses. I do the work. And I thought Noel would do the same.
I guess I was wrong. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video, guys. Appreciate it, and see you another time with a topic that won't be this. Bye.